This is a, a short gem demonstration of uh, Vaxstation 4090 um, and what it does when you boot it up. This particular model uh, it has got uh, an 80, 80 megabytes of RAM. It has got two 18 gigabyte hard disks which are uh, Ultra 3 SCSI models which have got um, 80 pins, 50 pin converters on. Um, you have to be careful picking drives for these boxes. And not everything works. And it's just going through uh, various self tests and then we should get a triple chevron prompt which is asking us what we want to do next. And this is in uh, the firmware of the box. And we get an error because I've defined the default boot device to be something that doesn't exist. So I can choose what I want to boot from. So we do do shoe device. Uh, then it comes up with a list of device names that are available to the system. Uh, EZA0 is the Ethernet card, um, the built-in Ethernet card. And it's giving you the MAC address there uh, on the top line. And then it looks down the SCSI bus and it finds DKA200, which is a read-only disk, uh, which has currently got a, some sort of CD-ROM in it. It's an RRD42 CD drive, uh, an external one as, as it happens. And then you've got two hard disks, which are identified as DKA300 and DKA400, both of which um, are given as a, as a size of 1.02 gigabytes and that's a restriction in the firmware. Um, it doesn't know anything about uh, drives that are greater than about 4 gig or so. So we're going to boot from uh, DK300, which is our boot device. But we've got our operating system installed on. And uh, off it goes. Uh, we're currently running OpenVMS fax version 7.3 on this box. And it is configured to run in a cluster um, as it happens, none of the other cluster machines are up, so it will sit and try and talk across the uh, thin wire ethernet to uh, anything else out there that uh, is part of the cluster. In this case, uh, it would be a DEC 3600, uh, which is an alpha processor box running uh, alpha VMS, but um, that's not currently sys uh, turned on, so it's going to sit there for a little bit. And then um, when it finds there's no one to talk to, it's going to say, uh, can't talk to anyone. So I will form a cluster for myself for now and uh, carry on with the boot sequence. The uh, 4090 can be operated in one of two modes. The console could either be directed to the built-in graphics device, which is currently what you're seeing now on the video. Um, there's a, a panel at the front which has got a small um, dip switch on it, which can be in one or two positions. Traditionally it's called S3. Um, and in this position it uh, displays the boot sequence on the graphic built-in graphics device, which is connected to the Vera. Uh, a proprietary deck cable, which is uh, like three, got three four-knot connectors in the size of a, approximately size of a DVI connector. Um, this box is running a, a deck-made converter, which converts that to VGA, well, nearly VGA. Um, the monitor that you plug in, be it a proper monitor or TFT panel, has to su support sync on green without some fancy. Um, electronics in the way um, and the other way of running it is via a serial, serial line which plugs in via an MMJ cable um, and then you'd plug in either a PC with a terminal emulator or a proper terminal like a VT320 or a VT520. So it's currently running through, um, it's gone through the standard boot up sequence um, now it's running some specific stuff on this box uh, all in once configured as well as a number of compilers um, and it's just uh, going through that process now and the last step of the process is to uh, start up deck windows which is uh, digital's implementation of the x window system and um, 
that will all of a sudden trigger the graphics device to display the login prompt uh, and there we go that's a vac station 4090 booting up